Hello, and welcome Hello. to the Book Coven. Woo! Whoa. Um, so now we've decided to do monthly book themes. We'll try. Mm, we'll try. Our best. This month, we <laughs> picked True Crime, Ooh. which is a great passion of ours. Yes. Uh, and my pick was The Monster of Florence by Douglas Preston with Mario Spezzi. And if you didn't know, she's Lillian. Oh, yes. I'm Lillian. <laughs> As she said. And that is, she's Chelsea. I am. I am. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Oh, boy. Okay, so quick thing. There's a lot of Italian names in this. Even though I am Italian, I will it's probably hard. not say anything, yeah. right? Don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> okay, diving on in. Dive on in. Italy. Murders. Yeah. Ready? Are you ready you for this true hit crime? You, hit you with a hot synopsis. Hot synopsis. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Douglas Preston fulfilled a lifelong dream when he moved with his family to a farmhouse in Florence. It is the dream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Upon meeting the celebrated journalist Mario Spezzi, Espezzi, Espezzi, Preston was stunned to learn that the olive grove next to his home had been the scene of a horrific double murder committed by one of the most infamous figures in Italian history, what, what? the monster of Florence. Fascinated... As anyone would be. <laughs> Preston began working with Spezzi to uncover the serial killer who had ritually slain 14 young lovers and was never caught. Here is the true story of their search to find and confront the man they believe is the monster. And in an ironic twist of fate that echoes the city's bloody history, Preston and Spezzi themselves become targets of a bizarre investigation. So stupid. So stupid. The Monster yeah. of Florence is a remarkable chronicle of murder, mutilation, deceit, suicide, and vengeance, with Preston and Spezzi caught in the middle. Mm -hmm. Hot synopsis. Hot. Boom. Uh, so, because we're in Italy, our food and drink pairings, very Italian. Very Italian. I had I'm to, so pumped to oh, eat them. Yeah. <laughs> I had to pick a uh, Chianti. A Chianti. A 2007 Rufino mm. Tuscan Chianti. And I picked, I made a vegan... Anise cookies, Ooh. which is my favorite Italian cookie, and it sounds like anus, which I've always loved. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm excited to try them. I made a um, vegan hazelnut orange Ooh. biscotti. Biscotti. So we're going to make some coffee after hey, this. Yeah, coffee and tea. Biscotti. Get dipping. Oh, yeah. Dips. So pumped. I made them last night. I didn't even have one because it was like midnight when I oh, finished. I had, I had three of my cookies. <laughs> nice. They're good. Brandon's like, can I eat one? I'm like, no. <laughs> they're for tomorrow. <laughs> Fuck out of here. And they're not for Pathfinder. I'm putting that shit away when those bitches Ooh, get here. Because yeah, biscotti is for fucking coffee. Yeah. I may eat all of the cookies yeah. after this. All I right. Let's, try, let's try this one. I've never Ooh. had a Chianti, I don't think. Cheers. I'm excited. Let's do it. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's nice. Ooh. It's not too dry. No, no. It's light. Yeah, I was told this is a good uh, quality Chianti. Oh, a quality. Quality. I mean, it's like $16, but like for the cheaper ones. <laughs> but yeah, That's too nice. expensive. <laughs> Got some clear notes in there. Yeah. Some notes of wine and alcohol. Definitely notes of wine. You know, if that's you smell long enough. That's Tuscany. <laughs> if you smell long <laughs> enough, you might get a hint of that uh, dish detergent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can uh, hear the screams of murder. I just put that against me. headphone. Yeah. You can still hear it. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> Through these headphones. Oh, boy. That's how much murder was in this. Oh, so much. I okay. can't believe. So, spoiler alert. Yeah. Can't believe they didn't catch anyone. No. Um, I can believe it because the case <laughs> they was fucked, horrible. They which fucked every crime yeah. scene. Oh, my God. I'm going to... I'll go through the killings first because this goes through 40 years yeah it's and it's is a shit show expansive. i'll try to give a quick summation mm -hmm. um before i go into these it should be noted that they didn't close a crime scene until the very last murder yes 
So, so all the other ones, journalists, journalists cops, were whatever, just on scrolling scene, around, yep. picking shit up. Is this something? The yeah, fingerprints everywhere. They would pick it up. Yep. And I get that maybe back in the, during the first murders, they didn't have DNA and stuff, uh, DNA know, testing and everything. They but saw still, the basics. They had like the basics. Fingerprints and yeah. shit. What are you doing? No idea. <laughs> hey, hey, what's this? Just Did the you last, plant that there? Is that what <laughs> The last was? horrific murder. Someone was like, hey, maybe we should uh, tape this off. Yeah. Just a thought. Wow. Where'd you learn that? CSI oh, boy. New York. They went to school. Okay. <laughs> Monsters. So our first poor victims, mm. Carmela Di Nuccio and Giovanni Foggy, on June 6, 1981. Uh, they were having sex in their car when the killer ambushed him. Giovanni was shot first through the window and killed instantly. Mm. Carmela was shot next. Her body was dragged away from the car, and here's where it gets weird. Her <laughs> vagina was completely cut out. Yep. And I loved his reaction to that. I had yep. the same one. Just like, what do you mean it's gone? What do you mean? Where, where where did it? <laughs> I love that. Where did it go? <laughs> what do you? <laughs> yeah. I immediately knew that was a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, I know killers take parts of their victims, but, but the uh, vagina. a whole vagina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, he didn't take the boob yet, right? Not, not yet. Not, that was okay. later. Okay. We'll get to the boob. Boobs. Um, also, things of note there, they had a straw purse, which was open and mm -hmm. left upside down, and shells from a point twenty two pistol Winchester Series H, mm -hmm. if you're a gun enthusiast. Oh, this wasn't the Beretta? That that is a Beretta. Oh, yeah. okay. It's the same, but that's the type of bullet, I guess. I don't know oh, how okay. guns work. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. The medical <laughs> examiner uh, said the killer used a knife or sharp instrument with a notch in the middle, possibly a scuba knife, to remove the vagina. Mm -hmm. And then, how many um, people have scuba knives? <laughs> I don't know. Antonio Vinci has a scuba oh, knife. Oh yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> Hot dog. Keep pay attention to that name. Yeah. Although there's like three Antonios in here and several Giovannis. and there's a million Vinci's. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll try just. Keep with it. Um, so while they were, the journalists were trying to sort that story out, one guy said that this crime reminded him of a murder from September 14th, 1974. Um, Stefania Pettini and Pasquale Gentilcore, uh, they, again, they were having sex in a parked car and they were shot. The woman's body was dragged away from the car, and her body was pricked with a knife 97 times in oh a design God. that went around the breasts and pubic area, and a piece of grapevine was inserted inside her vagina. It's so rude. Yep. Just leave it alone. <laughs> He's a serial killer. I know, but just leave it alone. <laughs> if he could, he would. Uh, they also found a purse tossed aside and Winchester Series H.22 rounds. And they confirmed that it came from the same gun from the 1981 murder because the firing pin had a defect that left a clear mark on the cartridge. Which, I'm sorry, if you're planning on killing someone, you should mm -hmm. always check your weapons that they don't have some kind of specific... Something that'll give you yeah. away This guy, ever both found. weapons yeah. have specific marks on them. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good job. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but he still was never caught, so, so it was a good job. It was a good job. The fucking perfect crime, oh, even God. though it probably wasn't. He probably oh, left he DNA been, everywhere. Yeah, but they he wouldn't have been caught for sure now, yeah. <laughs> um, so then, so that was the, 74 was a, technically the first killing, but that was from the past. Mm -hmm. And so then, then uh, October 22nd, 1981, Susanna Camby and Stefano Baldi were found dead. Once again, they had been shot. Uh, the same shells were found on the ground. She was dragged away, and her vagina was removed using the same knife. Police also found a doorstop 20 meters from the murder scene, which some guy was like, oh, yeah, I, I recognize that. It's a doorstop. It's, a door it, it's not important, but it comes but it up again <laughs> for a very stupid reason. <laughs> I imagine it was just this, some guy like, yeah, I got that for twelve ninety nine yeah. at Walmart. It's a fucking doorstop. It's a satanic ritual yeah. object yeah sure. obviously um and then june 19th 1982 antonella migliorini and paolo mandardi maynardi <laughs> the monster attacked them after they had finished having sex antonella was backseat getting dressed when paolo became aware there was someone outside the car he tried to reverse the car and get away but the monster shot him in the shoulder which caused him to swerve into a ditch uh, the monster approached the car and shot them both in the head. 
He tossed Paolo out of the car and tried to drive it out of the ditch, but then he gave up and fled the scene without his usual mutilation. Um, Paolo, the poor guy, wasn't actually killed straight away. <laughs> he, he never regained consciousness and died a few hours later. Uh, but the police told the press to say that he had been taken alive and said something useful. So that they could try and... Yeah, try to spook him. Yeah. Uh, nothing seemed to come of it, but... Um, is sort of something happened. <laughs> Not really, but kind of. More on that later. <laughs> and then we have um, these names I will not say right. Uh, Horst Mayer and Yerush. <laughs> Those, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say it? I don't know. UW. So I didn't read the book. I listened to the audio book. Oh, so I don't it. know what it looks like. Yeah. And, and I don't know what, how you said it. U-W-E. Yeah. Roosh, on September 10th, <laughs> yeah, 1983. Um, so they assume that the monster thought this was a man and woman. There were two men, mm, although... The German men, yeah, right? One of them had long hair, so I guess at night from a distance, you mm-hmm. could assume it was a woman. It's um, happened they to Brandon were, and I yeah. several times. <laughs> <laughs> and they turn around, hey, hi, hey, <laughs> sexy, excuse me. Uh, so they were in a van, and the killer shot one of them through the window, and the van is higher than Italian, like the normal car. So they assume the killer's mm. around like 5'9". Um, so one of them was killed that way. And then he shot through the sides of the vans and killed the other guy who was found crouched in the corner. That was sad. Yeah. And um, they found a torn up, pages from a gay magazine torn up outside. Uh, so they, I guess the killer thought it was a man and woman got pissed yeah. it's a gay couple possibly it was just like ah fuck this yeah the trash <laughs> the scene. uh again the same shots were found um and then we have pia rotini and claudio stefanacci on july 29th 1984 uh, a couple had been having sex in their car when the monster ambushed and shot them claudio was found inside the car pia was dragged away and her vagina was removed and now her left breast had been cut off Mm-hmm. Up New to development. Yep. Yeah, he's like, you know what? The vagina. Not just the vagina. It's just not enough. Yeah. <laughs> also, like, where is he keeping these? Right? <laughs> How do you store a vagina? He's keeping them in six locked containers. Oh yes. <laughs> in in that. Oh yeah, that cabinet. they planted. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Spezzy planted. Yep. <laughs> and then this final killing was Nadine Moreau and Jean Michael Kravishvili. Found on September 9th, 1985. Um, they were found on the 9th, but police struggle to determine if they were killed on the 7th or 8th. They have mm-hmm. one witness saying she came across the tent and the car and smelled something weird, but she didn't look into it, didn't report it. And then they found them like two days later. So they don't really know. Again, police investigation. <laughs> Good call. There's no way you could find out when a person was killed. <laughs> well, didn't uh, Doug Preston, didn't yes, he send it to someone? the fucking non-police officers. Yeah. They, they were maggots found on the body that determined it was the from size s- of the maggots. Yeah, Saturday, the not Saturday. Sunday. Saturday, yeah. But, you know, again, according to the cops, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Leave it to the journalist. <laughs> uh, so these guys, uh, they were in a tent, and the monster snuck up on them while they were having sex, cut a seven-inch line in the fly of the tent, and then when they opened it to see what was happening, they were hit with a hail of bullets. Nadine was killed immediately, but Jean wasn't seriously injured. He ran out of the tent and into the woods. Always a bad call. Mm-hmm. Uh, the monster ran after him and stabbed him in the back, chest, and stomach, and then cut his throat. Uh, now, it's important to note that Jean, John, whatever, was an avid runner and very athletic, and the monster outran and overtook him. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, again, that's important later on. Mm-hmm. Uh, after he killed him, he went back to the tent and cut out Nadine's vagina and left breast. Typical. Um, so those were all the killings. Mm-hmm. Quite a man, this it's monster. Got quite the repertoire. <laughs> and here's where it gets silly. <laughs> again, just a whole botched investigation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first kind of, there was a million suspects. I'll try to fly through these. Uh, so their first theory was that it was, um, they discovered this group of peeping Toms called the Indiani, yeah. <laughs> uh, who would 
apparently, like, having sex in cars is really common in Italy. So they were, it was also common to just watch them. Yeah, so they'd, <laughs> they'd have this whole rig where they go watch people have sex. I can't believe people had setups and they had spots they, spe- they yes, like, the preferred. Good spots, the good spots. And they'd pay people to, like, take them to yeah, the good spots Yeah, and they'd have, like, watch. binoculars. Yeah, they yeah, had it's a whole thing. audio equipment yep. to listen to it. Yep. Oh, my God. Which, I mean, everyone knows this is happening, but still couples are going out there. Like, <laughs> right? Like, yes. Because, I mean, Italians, like... Yeah, they, they have they, nowhere they else get, to have they sex. They don't leave the house until they're married. Yeah. And I, f- I find out the Italians either get married at, like, 18 or 50. Yes. There's yeah. no one Exactly. <laughs> um, and then that led to another group of peeping toms that spied on those peeping toms mm-hmm. and took pictures Black of them. Blackmailed them. To blackmail, yeah. Just <laughs> hilarious. So, so there was... Um, <laughs> there was one guy, Enzo Spalletti, who was spying on people in the area... Um, when the first murder took place, and he had admitted that he had watched that first couple a few times in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was charged in July, but they had no evidence connecting him, so nothing really came of it. And then uh, because of the body mutilation, everyone got it into their head that the killer was like a doctor, specifically a gynecologist. <laughs> Even though yeah. he used a, a Even, yeah, scuba knife. Yeah, the medical <laughs> examiner said, like, there's no real surgical Yeah, yeah, he just these. literally, like, scooped out the vagina. Yeah. I love the guy asked doctor. him, like, could a doctor have done this? He's like, well, Anyone what, could have what <laughs> surgery is performed where a vagina is cut out? I can't answer that question. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the police got a ton of letters accusing doctors <laughs> and so their next arrest was garametta gentile who was a gynecologist in tuscany hey my gynecologist is weird i'm gonna yeah. write the police about him <laughs> they, there were rumors that he had like his wife in his fridge and he had a, a pistol in a safe deposit box yeah. and all this shit they searched it nothing came up and then there was this other guy carlos santangelo who was not a doctor, but was pretending to be a doctor and seeing patients yeah, in see, hotels. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Yeah. He, again, he was like, yeah, I admit I'm kind of weird, but I'm not a killer. <laughs> and uh, he, he had alibis for all three murders. Um, and then they questioned a priest who was known to hire sex workers in order to shave off their pubic hair. Um, but that also was a dead end, mm-hmm. and no charges were made. <laughs> oh, wine break, sorry. <laughs> um, so then their first real... Theory was the Sardinian Trail that made more sense to me than the other bullshit. Yeah, but yeah. It, again, they ruined it, so they, they could did, never. Yeah. Um, so during all this, people were sending cops letters accusing everyone of being a killer. Mm-hmm. And one letter had a newspaper clipping from August 23rd, 1986, of a couple named Barbara Locke and Antonia Lo Bianco who were murdered while having sex in their car. The same gun shells from the monster killings were found at the crime scene. Um, But that case seemed to have been solved. A man named Stefano Mille had confessed to killing his wife and her lover in a fit of jealousy. But when investigators looked into the case, they found evidence that was actually a group killing. So they thought that the accomplices of that murder took the gun Mm -hmm. and like Mm -hmm. one or all of them had moved on to become the monster. Uh, their only witness at the time of the crime was Barbara's five-year-old son, yeah, Natalino, who was asleep in the car when his mom was murdered. But I mean, also, why'd you bring your child along yeah, in the car with uh, you while you're having sex with this man who isn't your husband? Yep. I mean, even if you, that, that's fucking weird, no matter what. Come on, son. But, yeah. Hey, she couldn't get a babysitter, go. you know? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Control <laughs> yourselves. Just for a little oh, while. Yeah. Um, so in his story... He named other people being at the crime, like some uncles, and mm-hmm. but his story kept changing. Yeah, because um, he's little. He's a kid, and he's scared. So eventually he just said that he only remembered his father, and the police were just like, sure, the dad yeah. did it. Mm-hmm. Um, so then opening the case again, their suspected accomplices, oh boy, the Vinci family, these guys. Uh, so the first accused of that murder and the monster was Francesco Vinci. Him and his two brothers, Salvatore and Giovanni, had left their hometown in Sardinia for Tuscany after Salvatore's wife died of apparent suicide. It wasn't suicide. (laughs) No. Um, Salvatore found a job working with the Mille family and started an affair with Barbara Locke. 
She left Salvatore for Francesco and then left Francesco for Antonio. So all three men had a motive to kill her. Yes. <laughs> Witnesses place him in the same area as some of the current 1980 killings. And investigator, investigators brought up that on June 21st, they found his car hidden in the woods. And that was the same day that police had put out the article saying that Paolo had survived his attack and told police something about his attacker. Mm -hmm. So they were like, oh, maybe he ditched it. <laughs> um, he told them a story about hiding from a woman's jealous husband, but it didn't really make sense. They arrested him in August 1982, and through the fall and winter of that year, there were no more murders. Um, but then in September, the German men were found killed. And that crime scene was a mess and mm -hmm. didn't really match up with the others. So they assumed that maybe his nephew Antonio, who they were they were really close, they had killed them to try to make his uncle seem innocent. Which I guess, mm -hmm. but I think it was just the same guy. Um, which I think was Antonio. Vici. It was Antonio. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was. Um, uh, that's my top suspect. We'll get into that's him That's like later. ninety eight percent. Oh yeah. It, it's him. But um, so yeah. Antonio was arrested ten days later for illegal possession of firearms, and with both of them in jail, the cops tried to do the whole pit them against each other, mm -hmm. saying that one had confessed to the other, but no, neither of them fell for it because they're hardened criminals. They're smart. <laughs> Antonio acted at his own at his own lawyer as his own lawyer mm -hmm. and got himself out of the weapons charge. And so with him out of jail and interrogations with Francesco failing, it just became harder and harder to keep him in jail. They questioned Stefano Mille again, and they found a note in his wallet that had been written by his brother Giovanni, not the Giovanni Vinci, oh, another yeah, yeah. Giovanni. <laughs> um, so he became their next suspect, Giovanni Mille, Stefano's brother, and Piero Muccarini, who's Stefano's sister's husband. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so both of these two were arrested for being the monster in January 1984. The note they found in his wallet was written in really, like, childish letters. It didn't really make sense. It said, quote, Report of Natalino regarding Uncle Pito that you would have said the name after serving the sentence, how it is shown from ballistic test of the shots fired. So it's like a memory aid mm -hmm. of what he should say when yeah. he's being questioned. So they figure that Giovanni, the note was given to him. Um, I lost it. By Giovanni, right? Yes. So it's given to him while they're investigating. And they assume mm -hmm. that he gave him the note telling him when police start to question him to say that Petro, Barbara's brother, was the uncle that Natalino had named at the being at the crime scene mm -hmm. and not Piero. Um, and then, uh, so they, they use that to arrest them, fake thinking that, like, well, if they're trying to divert police suspicion, they must be the monsters. Yeah. But, like, no, they just they don't want to go to jail yeah, for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, they maybe have other things they're guilty of, Yeah. Right? And oh, they all have. They these, all This have, entire yeah. family's fucked. They're fucked. <laughs> so they were arrested, but then in July 1984, another murder took place with all three suspects in jail, so mm -hmm. that went out the window. Yeah. Um, the third suspect, the favorite to Vinci brother, <laughs> Salvatore. Jeez. <laughs> uh, uh, so He's a mess. Francesco's brother, Antonio's father... Around the same time as the July murder, another serial killer was hitting Florence. Six sex workers were killed in the city center. The MOs of the murders were different but, but from the monster killings, but certain elements led police to think they were connected. All the killings took place in apartments where girls worked and were considerably sadistic. Uh, the knife wounds on one of the victims resembled that of the monster killings and was possibly done with a scuba knife. These fucking scuba knives. <laughs> Well, How many people have scuba I've knives, I've never even right? heard of a scuba knife. Yeah. I don't know what they look like. I mean, we don't well, need them. <laughs> while investigating the apartments of the last mm -hmm. victim, they discovered her water heater had recently been prepared and the company label was left on it. And guess who owns said company? <laughs> Good old Salvatore. Dun, dun, dun. So this led them to take a closer look at him. Uh, they reopened his wife's suicide mm -hmm. and found very startling things. Mm -hmm. 
So poor Barita, when she was younger, she was dating someone that Salvatore hated. So as you do, he raped her mm. and as punishment. And Monster. then when she got pregnant, he married her to do his duty. Oh, my God. Everyone in town said that he beat her. He wasn't giving her enough money to eat, just enough to keep the baby alive. Jesus. She continued to date her lover, and Salvatore grew to hate the baby, thinking that it wasn't his kid, but the lover's child. Um, so the night she was found dead, she was found with a propane tank next to her and a hose like lying next to her. So they assumed that she killed herself yeah. that way. But three hours before her death, she had went to a neighbor's house saying her tank was empty and asked if she could use the stove before she went back to her house. Salvador claimed he was at a bar that night, and when he first came home, he found her in bed with her lover who chased him off, which is not likely because if you're an angry Italian man, <laughs> yeah, you're not getting chased why would off. you let this scum chase you out of your own fucking yeah. house? No. And then he claimed he went back to the bar and came back with Barbarina's brother and some other guy. Which people assume he's just doing that to, to kind of get, get a witness. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like, it's just, it's very unlikely that if three hours earlier the tank was empty and she was busy with a baby, how would she have time to fill it and kill herself? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, she had bruises on her neck and scratches on her face, oh which kind of lead to strangulation. A <laughs> yeah, but of course the cops were like, meh. <laughs> She killed Just herself. another Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, it's it's Italy um, in That's the 1900s. Like, so yeah. I feel like she could have a knife in her chest and they'd still be like, oh, well, she killed herself with propane gas. And I, I can't help but thinking that the cops are with the men in this in this it's sense small, where it's just yeah, like it's, you know it is if you're certain, beating your wife yeah. it's okay yeah because i mean look back at italian yeah, yeah, history yeah. the nuns beating each beating children and yeah and you know corporal punishment being okay and yeah i just think they're okay with domestic abuse yeah and she if she was known to have or a they lover were. they were probably like oh sure He's yeah pissed that of course wife, yeah so yeah you hit your wife no, yeah, it's like, not okay. Yeah. Even if she has a lover, oh, you just divorce yeah. her like a normal fucking person. No, no, go ahead. Kill her. <laughs> Kill her. It's okay. He moved it. The kid was moved out of the bedroom into the living room. Ah, uh, okay. So, you know, good guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in the current 1980s investigation, police found, um, they looked around to see if there were ever, ever ugh, if there were any point twenty two Berettas, and there were 11 in town. And one of them just happened to have been stolen before Salvatore left for Tuscany. Wow. What a coinky dink. Mm -hmm. And then they questioned his next wife and a few other girlfriends. And what a sex life this bro led. <laughs> uh, basically, he'd have sex with anything. Yep. Men, women, whatevs. Mm -hmm. uh, he loved some orgies. Mm -hmm. And so some of the girls were like, yeah, he was the best lover I ever had. Some <laughs> of them were like, no, he beat me and he forced yeah, me into yeah. these weird sex things. Um. So because of his violent past and his sexual desires, he was the top suspect. All the other suspects were released and his phone was tapped. He was followed by police. All that jazz. He was arrested on June 11th, 1986, not for the monster murders, but for the murder of his wife. Um, their thinking was if they could convict him on a simpler crime, they could leverage that into a monster conviction. Mm -hmm. uh, which failed because they're terrible at their job. Yes. Uh, he stayed in two, prison for two years before his trial started in 1988. Uh, the trial led to absolutely nothing. He was acquitted <laughs> because the murder had taken place too long ago and witnesses had either died or no longer remembered and physical evidence had disappeared. After he was released, he just straight up vanished. <laughs> Oof, God. I mean, I, I don't blame him. Yeah. He's just like, you know what? I don't want to deal with that this shit. That was a close call. <laughs> I'm out. I googled. There was some private investigator that claimed he found him in 2002, oh. but, you know, he's probably dead now. Yeah, and I don't think he was the monster. He wasn't, no. but he knew it was his son, yes. in my mind. We'll and, get to that. But the, do you get into the FBI profile? Yeah. Okay. I go with, like, I list. I will Perfect. give you an exact... It's totally him, and you'll see why. <laughs> um, but that's just it. It's not this guy. It's not Salvatore. No, it's not right? Salvatore. So. But this whole thing, they were on the right page with this. Mm-hmm. They should have looked more into it, looked better Go into it. Deeper. Fucking, if there's a murder, don't just be like, ah, yeah. this seems like the obvious answer. Leave it. The simplest, Occam's Razor, the simplest yeah. answer is usually the, the correct one. Yeah, and yeah. it simply is Antonio. 
<laughs> um, but after this shithole shit show, they uh, they got a new chief inspector who wasn't much smarter. Um, and he was like, you know what? This is leading to nothing. Let's move away from this. He, Which is interesting. Yeah. I mean, I see what he was thinking, but it's not nothing. Yeah. So he used the IBM... PC computer technology to look at every man, man in the province of Florence that had been picked up for by police for sexual crimes and which ones were out of jail during the monster killings. <clears throat> the name Pietro Passiani came up, not that other Pietro, different Pietro. <laughs> um, so this guy, they took note of it because after the last killing in 1985, someone had sent police a letter asking them to look into Passiani. Um, Pacciani, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shut up. Is it two C's? Yeah. Yeah, that's a ch. 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 <laughs> Pacciani. Pacciani. Um, but they, uh, they did, but nothing was ever found to connect him to the monster killings. But this guy, <laughs> let me tell you about this guy. So they decided, with the name, come on, his name came up again, so they're like, okay, we should look more into this. Dig in a little. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he had previously served a sentence for murdering the man who was seducing his wife. And this murder, he beat him to death with a rock, stabbed him 18 times, made her, he raped her next to his corpse, and then raped the corpse in front of her. So. He's a. He's a. Wow. Jolly good man. <laughs> and then, um. Shortly after the last monster killing in 1985, he was again arrested for three years for raping all his daughters. Oh, God. Disgusting. He's, yeah. Um, so then they, they use that explanation to <laughs> explain why there hadn't been a killing in three oh, years. okay. Yeah. So like, ah, oh, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. They also found disturbing paintings in his house, which... So he has weird art. But yeah, the, he the, claimed to have painted it, though. Yeah, it was... Uh, they didn't. have, like nymphs and it's kind of it's a little satanic but like it's weird art it means nothing it, yeah but they that was their big evidence this mm -hmm. other guy's big evidence about this whole satanic cult that started he's like, that rigmarole he's pretending that he knows the psychology of the killer and, yeah, and yeah. what's going on and but, but he'd have he a just, field day at our houses yeah right <laughs> she's have so much weird <laughs> art swords you're i have a murder. massive tattoo of a naked witch dancing yeah. around a so you're a cultist am i the monster yeah. <laughs> good god <laughs> Never been to Italy. I am the monster. I'm the monster Florence. of Florence. I wasn't born wasn't at born. that time, but it was me. <laughs> so um, I shouldn't say that. They'll probably arrest yeah. me. <laughs> so when he was asked about murdering his wife's lover, he said that he'd been spying on them having sex and fell into a fit of rage after seeing her bare her left breast. As you will Suspicious. remember, mm -hmm. two left breasts had been cut out, which they were like, aha, confession. <laughs> left breast. <laughs> but, you know, the killer was said to be right-handed, so it would make sense that he would cut off the left breast. Again, means I nothing. Um, people were not buying that he was the killer. It is very clear that he is a piece of shit. Yes. But he is not the killer you are seeking. Again, they had no evidence connected him, connecting him at all. Yeah. They searched his house several times. Nothing came up. And then, um, and the last search of his house, they, out of the blue, found a shell of the gun. It hadn't been fired, so it didn't have the notch thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they also found a piece of, uh, the pi a pistol, that same type of pistol, wrapped up in a rag. But, you know, it's kind of weird that their last search, mm -hmm. they suddenly find this. Yeah. yeah. Um, Spezzy questioned a officer and he said on tape, like, yeah, I think it was planted, mm -hmm. which it was totally planted. <laughs> um, so he's officially arrested in 1993, the year after we were born. Mm. Wow. Popping off in Italy. See, it couldn't have been us. Yeah. <laughs> And here we go. Here comes to my, my favorite part of the story, the satanic cult. Yes. <laughs> so another chief inspector, Michael Gucciari, and the public prosecutor, who's the worst person, <laughs> Giuliano Mignini, created this elaborate theory that a satanic cult was behind the killing. And they had hired this guy and his a few other accomplices to murder these people cut out the female sex organs, and bring it to them for their satanic rituals. Mm -hmm. This whole thing lasted from 1995 to 2008. Yeah. And was based on nothing. On nothing. But They're, they had no 
they felt like they had no eggs left in their basket, right? No. So, and they were really pushing it. And Spezzy, yeah. he was writing articles and stuff saying, like, look how stupid this is. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, no, so, we got a proof that. But we're then right. that's that's what leads them to Spezzy because yeah. they're just like, well, fuck this asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On their main evidence were the paintings and the <laughs> yeah. fucking doorstop. Which is literally uh, a doorstop door stop. that several people have that you could probably buy fucking anywhere. Yeah. But no, it's an esoteric object used to communicate between this world and the infernal regions. What? Which they say every time. Every time they said that in the book, I was like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's not an esoteric. Stop saying esoteric. It's not it's an object. Esoteric. You use it to communicate. It's, a it's door not stop. a crystal ball. It's not a fucking pendulum. Oh, it's not a Ouija God. board. It's a doorstop. Yeah, so they're like, it's this guy. And then... um. Passi- so Paziani was in jail, but with the Italian law, he had a right to be acquitted. He had another mm-hmm. trial. Mm-hmm. And on the day that was set to go and where the, the judge was like, yeah, this guy, there, you have no evidence against, against him. I'm going to release him. Yeah. On that day, four accomplices came out of nowhere, mm. four witnesses, just poof, hello. Yeah. <laughs> and they all said, that, like, yeah, I was with him during this time. I helped him kill this couple blah, 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 I would, you know, but these people, two of them were drunks, one of them was known as the village idiot, (laughs) Um, uh, one was a prostitute, and the other one was her pimp, and they were clearly just guys that, pieces of shit that the cops found, and were like, yeah, I can maybe rope something together, you kind of knew him, you were in a circle, you were witnesses. Yeah. Um, So the judge was trying not to have any of that, because it was clearly fake, but, you know, they used it. They still fucking... Uh, Bananas. They arrested two of those idiots, the accomplices, who just said it because it gave them attention, basically. Mm-hmm. And Pacciani died of a heart attack during this whole thing. Yeah. And probably just like, peace out. Yeah. Bye. Which is kind of proof that he wasn't the monster because he was in such poor yes. health. Oh, that's not... Yeah, the whole... Uh, the last two ki- couple. Yeah. The ath- athlete... At the time of that murder, this dude was 60 years old. He had suffered a heart yeah. attack. He had every he had element you could think of. Yeah. There's no way in hell he chased a fucking young and athlete. And outran him. And then overtook him. Yeah. Not, and I don't even think he was tall enough to kill, like, instantly. Oh, yeah, handling. yeah, because they said they needed yeah, to be like at some least sh- there's a picture. Yeah. There's a picture of him in the book. He's this old fucking guy, like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> Again, piece of shit, but he's not but this they're just like, I mean, we don't have all the evidence, but we have evidence that he is a, a dirtbag. Yeah. Like, okay, okay, so get him for that and stuff. And yeah, you got him for that. He served yeah. his time and he fucking You don't died. need to pin the monster yeah. killings on him. I don't um, know. Yeah, so they thought this cult was like a group of rich Italian men. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, maybe there's a cult of rich Italian men. Italians it's are weird. I'm sure rich people are, yeah. <laughs> rich people do some weird shit, but they're not. Every, like, serial killer, if they don't have an answer, they're always, like, cult. Yeah, yeah. Why is that your go-to? Satanists are probably just, we like, We can't guys. figure it out, so it must have been a group of people yeah. who can barely get their shit together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they went to this fucking, um, like, uh, old folks home or something that they called the Villa of Horrors. <laughs> yeah. And they found... A- <laughs> Halloween decorations in the basement, <laughs> like bats and skeletons. They're like, oh my god, it's you. The Satan call. This is where it starts. <laughs> Again, come over to my house, no. take a look around. Yeah. I've got a skull on the apparently, table. Right apparently, now. we're in a word occult. Yeah. Um, so in 1985, a doctor, Francesco, another Francesco, he had committed suicide and he was from a wealthy family. They thought he was part of this mm-hmm. cult. And wanted to turn them in, so the cult killed him. Now, that led to a ridiculous thing. I don't even want to go into it. Body switching was involved. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, Again, no evidence. This is where Spezzy comes in. Mm-hmm. 2006, Spezzy was arrested. Um, at first it started, they thought he was tampering with evidence and planting mm-hmm. fake evidence. Like, um, he went to this house where someone had led him to believe that the Vinci people were using it as a safe house and were storing uh, body parts and shit yeah. there. But it was just a guy, he's an investi- you know, journalist looking into a story yeah, that yeah. he got. He's not, but the cops were like, no, he made it up. Yeah, he planted, and he the, planted evidence. the evidence. <laughs> so his whole poor fucking trial, he was in jail for a little bit. They kept trying to pin it on him. At one point, they accused him of being the monster. Yeah. Again, 
Not a shred of evidence. Nothing. Nothing. And then um, Preston, when he he was writing a book with Spezzi against uh, for the monster killing, mm-hmm. and they kept writing articles debunking all their stupid theories, which is why they went after them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're embarrassing them. <laughs> he was interrogated by uh, Mignini, and it was a terrible investigation, and they pretty much banned him from mm-hmm. entering Italy. Um, but it ended well. The, th- the trial was thrown away because, again, there's fucking nothing yeah, on these yeah. guys. Um, and then um, Gutierrez and Mignini went on. They they had their own trial against uh, a breach of office, abuse of office and stuff. But um, Mignini was still working as a prosecutor, and he started the whole Amanda Knox shit show, oh, which I thought yeah. was hilarious. <laughs> Again, he, she did the same thing. There's no evidence against yeah. her. She's the killer. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Um, so that's the, that case. Mm-hmm. Uh, Preston and Spezzi's investigation, they think that it was Antonio Vinci, mm-hmm. which makes total sense. Um, in 1989, the FBI did a profile on the monster that stated, quote, and this is like, it was a long thing. I just got the important mm-hmm. bits. He suffers from sexual dysfunction and would have little or no sexual contact with women his own age. He kills to satisfy his libidinous desires, which can't be satisfied in the normal way. Strong evidence of this is that none of the crime scenes involved uh, show any evidence of rape, molestation, or sexual activity. He is likely to have a record of petty crimes such as arson and theft, but not crimes such as rape and violence. During the seven years between the crime of 1974 and 1981, the monster may have been out of Florence. He probably lived alone during the period of the crimes. When not living alone, he pro- probably lived with an older woman, such as an aunt or a non-related person he was having a relationship with. He would probably contact police and try to mislead the investigation. And finally, he would have a history of maternal abandonment and sexual abuse within the family. Mm-hmm. Now let's go over how Antonio fits all, all of it. Of, yeah. Fucking all of it. <laughs> so it he, is him. It's him. <laughs> he has a rap sheet of auto theft, illegal possession of weapons, breaking and entering, and arson. He left Florence in January 1975 and returned in 1980. Not long after that, the killing started, started again. When he left Florence, he lived with an aunt from 1982 to 1985. He returned, and he, mar- he was married, but it was annulled for non-consummation. <laughs> then several months after the last killing in 1985, he met an older woman and moved in with her. At one point during investigations, he had offered himself up to police as an informant. And last but not least, his mother was murdered by supposedly his father. Mm-hmm. And, and then shortly after that, he was traumatized again when his father's longtime girlfriend had left, who he had grown very close to. He was living with his father in a small house while his father presided over sex parties involving men, women, and possibly even children, where he was likely exposed to his father's bizarre sexual Mm -hmm. activity. In 1974, four months before the first monster killing, Salvatore Vinci had filed a complaint to police that his son had broken into his house. When asked if anything had been taken, he said he didn't know, but it's possible that he had stolen the gun from his father. And after the first killing, Salvatore checked himself into a psychiatric hospital, perhaps because he knew his son Mm -hmm. had murdered someone terribly. Yep. Antonio was only 15 at the time of the first killing, but, you know, 15-year-olds can kill. Well, a lot of serial killers start when they're really young. And that crime scene wasn't as clean as the others. He only got away with it by accident. I think the bullet hit the first guy in like the arm and ricocheted into his heart or something oh yeah so he died that way and then the girl actually left the car Mm -hmm. and he chased after her and and, yeah yeah. like it was a mess and it was it fits with a panicked you know impulsive team yeah yeah and he had lived near all the murder sites or at least was familiar with them Mm -hmm. so it's fucking him and they interviewed him as journalists (laughs) would And I will read some of it. Because it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And he's such a mess. Before he left, uh, before the journalist left the house, too, he, like... He threatened them. He threatened them. He... Oh, he's so creepy. Let's see. I'll just give you some uh, highlights here. So the whole time they're interviewing him, he's smiling. He's weird. They're talking about terrible thing, and he's like, meh. Um, So there was no official report... About this whole gun theft thing, because the cops were trying to, I guess, keep it quiet because they had their own idea. So all they wanted was to get it on tape that he had, in fact, broken into the house. 
So he says, um, he's talking about how he hates his father, and if he was in a room with his father, he'd kill him. Mm. And then he, uh, Spezzi says, but you had some serious fights, even when you were young. In the spring of 1974, for example, your father filed a complaint against you for robbing his house. Um, this was a crucial question, as it would confirm the missing document if the missing document actually existed. Uh, that's not quite right, Antonio said. Since he couldn't say if I'd taken anything, I was charged only for violation of domicile. Another time we had a fight and I pinned him, planting my scuba knife mm-hmm. at his throat. Scuba, scuba knife. knife. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, they didn't talk shit about a scuba knife. And like, why did he, he only that said it. A, that was a challenge. It's, it was, he's, he, exactly. He probably had been questioned by cops before about this. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, I see where you clans are going with this. Yeah. Scuba knife. Yeah, he's, he's challenging them to yeah. see past his words and to read between the fucking lines. Yep. And, um, yeah, he admits uh, the whole separation thing. He was like, yeah, I was married briefly. It didn't work out. She couldn't have children. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, and then they asked him straight up, like, if your father owned the point twenty two caliber Beretta, you were the person in the best position to take it, perhaps during the violation in the spring of 1974. Antonio didn't answer immediately. He seemed to reflect, I have proof I didn't take it. Which is, if I had taken it, he smiled, I would have fired it into my father's forehead. <laughs> Which is cool. <laughs> and then, let's see. That's not proof, though. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> and then they asked him, they're like, so you're not the monster of Florence? Mm-hmm. And he, there was a brief hesitation. Antonio never stopped smiling. And he said, no, I like my pussy alive. Oh, my God. <laughs> And then when, um, when we got up to leave, Antonio followed us to the door. While he opened it, he leaned towards Spezzi. He spoke in a low voice, his tone remaining cordial, and he switched into the, into the fo- informal two form. Ah, Spezzi, I almost forgot something. He took on, his voice took on a hoarse, threatening tone. Listen carefully, I don't play games. Mm-hmm. Bro. Yeah, he's the killer. Yeah, I. Ugh. He's the fucking, fucking that scuba knife. When he 100%. said that, I was like, dude, yeah, yeah. that's it. Challenge accepted. That's he knows. He's like, I've already shit. gotten away with it. Yeah. I've already been questioned by them. They have no fucking idea that yep. it's been me this whole Cult. goddamn he's time. He's probably fucking having a whale of a time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> satanic cult. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, whatever. It's him. You fucks. It's gotta be him. Yeah. So he's never. He was never arrested. No. Um. Nothing ever came of it. Nothing. Lived his life, you know, he didn't care that his name was in the book as, like, uh, the killer. He was mm-hmm. just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, because they're not going to go after him. Yep. And now, I don't know how he would, how old he would be now. Yeah, I'd probably I'd... be dead, but... Oh, so he got away with it, but yeah, it was him. Yeah. So now on to the actual book. I liked it. I liked the book. Um, it was very well written. Yeah. It's split in two parts. Spezzy yeah. investigating, and then Douglas comes in. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot happening. And mm-hmm. it would have been easy to get lost in it, but it made sense. Yeah, because there's so many Italian so names. So many names. Everyone has the same name. Yeah, and you're like, wait, There's wait, a couple wait, wait. Francescos. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many Vinci's. Um, but I was never confused. I knew what <laughs> year I was in. I knew which fucking Francesco we were talking yeah, he about. he did a good job putting um, it together. I mean, it, it's it's nonfiction, but it reads like fiction because it's so fucking it's bizarre. Yeah, <laughs> and you, got, I got so frustrated this whole book just like that because yeah. they're so bad at yeah, their I know, jobs. I know. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm gonna get thrown into an Italian prison now because, like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean we're shit bad at about our jobs? Us? We're arresting Guys, you get for it your together. <laughs> It's just, it's so Italian. Everyone's smoking all the I time know. and fucking drinking Hilarious. espressos and yeah. eating pasta. Like, let's talk about murder. Oh, man, I could go for pasta tonight. Always. Eh? Yes, we should. <laughs> Is there a pasta place? I don't think so. We're going to find it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was cool reading, like, their perspective of their own trial yeah. and, like, how it affected them and yep. their family. Their families and him having to leave Italy and everything. Yeah. The whole interview with Antonio. It's a couple pages mm-hmm. long. Read it. There's a lot of, like, oh, that's yeah, something. Yeah. Um, people kind of criticize the ending of the book because it doesn't really end. The monster's not found. But, you but know, that's, that's real problem. life. That happens it's real with, life. Yeah, exactly. it happens with a lot of crime cases. Yeah. It's never solved. Yeah. And, like, I mean, they presented all the evidence they had from all parties, even the stupid evidence. Mm-hmm. They, you know, you can make your own opinion of who the killer is. It's Antonio. Um, <laughs> make your own opinion, but that's the right that's opinion. The, that's <laughs> the opinion. Unless, unless it's just some fucking guy that's completely not involved. 
but like the gun, someone who's nev- never be been on the radar, not even off. a blip. He, the gun might, he the would key. be fucking laughing. Yeah. But if you fucking, if, if that same gun was used, they're not going to sell or just chuck a murder weapon no. unless they're completely fucking dumb. Yeah. But they are criminals, so they would ha- know to keep it in the family. Yep. So it's the only thing that makes sense. It's Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Definitely a good read um, or a good audiobook listen. Because uh, I, I like the guy's voice who did the audio book. It's, it's nice. I wish I could have heard it's it. Nice. Yeah. He, he was so good at uh, pronouncing all the Italian That names. was where I struggled. <laughs> Even like the, the town names. I was like, what the fuck am I but saying? What drove me nuts is every time he was reading something that the Italians were saying, he was using an Italian accent. Oh, yeah. And Italian. it was driving me oh, nuts. Because in my line of work, everyone, all of my clients are Italian. Yeah. So I hear that accent. All mm-hmm. fucking day, every day. And then to hear it in the car on the way to work, too. Hey. I'm just like, oh, my God. And then he killed her. Hey, hey Anto, I'm spetsy. <laughs> oh, dog, oh, you come over. You I see feel, what I'm talking about. I feel like I brought shame to my family because I couldn't say fucking anything in this book. <laughs> I can hear it and understand yeah, it. Yeah. I can't say it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the authors are uh, great. Doug. Doug is a very well-known author. He has a fucking million books. One of my mom's favorite authors. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll okay. Read, I'll read their little thingies here. <laughs> Douglas Preston worked as a writer and editor for the American Museum of Natural History and taught writing at Princeton University. He has written for the New Yorker, Natural History, National Geographic, Harper, Smithsonian, and The Atlantic. The author of several acclaimed nonfiction books, Preston is also the co-writer with Lincoln Child of the best-selling series of novels featuring FBI agent Pendergast. My mom always talks about that. Never (laughs) read it. Maybe I should read it. Hmm. And then Mario Spezzi, a highly decorated journalist, has covered many of the most important criminal cases in Italy, including those involving terrorism and the mafia, and has been investigating the Monster of Florence case since its beginning. He has also published both fiction and nonfiction books in Italy and several other countries. Nice. So, uh, yeah. Good for them. Had a rough patch for them, but they got through it. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Doug will ever go back to Italy. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> kind of tainted. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> oh, opinion. what a beautiful case. Yeah, yeah. I really liked it. Absolute shit show. It's fun to read. I was... Oh, sorry. I was really pumped to read some true crime because... Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I listen to it. Especially, like, I've never heard of The Monster of Florence. No. And I'm actually quite surprised after reading it. Well, technically, it, we have heard about it in ways because a lot of Hannibal Lecter was based oh, on Oh, true. Him. Yeah, that's true. So we knew of it, but not Yeah, but not really. of the origin yeah. for it. And I'm going to Italy later this year, yep. so you know I'm going to go to these crime scenes. Like, Start all asking right, people about it. Let's like, solve who do you this think the murderer Detective was? Lillian yeah. on the scene. Can you imagine if I solved it? <laughs> Everyone's dead that's involved in yeah. the case. I'm like, So it ah. doesn't even like, matter anymore? It, <laughs> matters, it matters, though. It matters. No, Definitely I'm not. I don't want to get, knowing my luck, I'd get thrown into an Italian prison mm, like them. Because I have no evidence, but that won't stop them. If that judge is still alive, I'm fucked. <laughs> Probably we listening to this, like, I'm going to get you. Yeah. Hey, I arrest you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't arrest me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not making fun of you. <laughs> oh, God. The uh, the whole cult thing, though, reminded me of, uh, so I just watched Suspiria. Mm-hmm. And. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, I'm sure they have some esoteric That object. was, yes. Well, the whole cult thing, there were cops that went there actually believing the doctor about there being a cult yep. and a coven. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I forgot to mention, cool. one of their main um, witnesses for the whole cult thing was a girl who has a conspiracy oh theory God. website. Yeah. Who was like, oh, yes. And she just kept, the like, Rose. emailing... Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, he put some of her emails to Doug, him. Yeah. Like, she'll send him 20 emails in a day, and they're yeah. all fucking insane. Yeah. And she was, like, their key witness. So, yeah. good job. Super good trustworthy. Job. <laughs> did a did a hot, hot investigation of it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Congratulations. Serial killers out there having a whale of a time. If he's alive, he's, like, 90, and he's just like, ha, 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 ha I got away with Probably it. Probably strokes his old shriveled strokes vaginas. Strokes like, yes. <laughs> My pretties. Takes I got them it. out of their, out of their <gasps> like, gross. Mm-hmm. Fucking, 
What is, he's, he's pickling them. Jars. He's pickling them. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> so him. He doesn't even give a shit that no. everyone's like, knows it's him. He's just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, as long as the cops don't know. Challenge me, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Got my scuba knife. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, classic. It was a fun... I uh, love true crime. A fun read, that's for sure. Cause yeah, it, yeah it, was, it was a mess. <laughs> Definitely recommend or even just look into the monster of Florence more. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Oh, there are some pictures. <laughs> I didn't look at any pictures. I looked at them. I yeah. will. I will. <laughs> I mean, nothing like two. You don't really see like a body, mm-hmm. but... The crime scenes, yeah, you see random people just strolling all over them. I'm like, well, that should be God. taped off. Are you a cop? Who are you? No. <laughs> and, like, it's not like it was that long ago. No. They did tape the it's crime the scenes off. Like, Get it together. Shit. <laughs> what in, like, did no one from, I mean, the FBI did some stuff. Wouldn't they send someone? Surely. Yeah. I don't know, because it's, I guess, overseas. You can't just claim a case, but, like, mm-hmm. Fuck. They're clearly struggling. Couldn't they have just been like, hey, you guys need a hand? Yeah. FBI, you know, we tape our crime scene. We, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we know how to kind of do this. Yeah, just a little. Seen, you know. But I love that they got the FBI um, report. Like, they did a full profile. Here's mm-hmm. what we think the murderer will be like based on our, you know, based on the evidence. That's cool. I love and that shit. I, and... When are they ever wrong? Like they, there's, a, they have psychologists mm-hmm. working on this. They, they've yeah, done the some research guy, like, and oh, the you studying. Know, here's what I think. Yeah, and they're just like, eh, it doesn't fit the yeah. guys we think it is. So we're gonna. Check but you it. have a guy that fits everything. <laughs> I know. I know. And it makes sense. He was never in jail for any of the killings. Mm-hmm. He stopped because you guys are all in his family. And in oh, his well, he did claim he was in jail. Yeah, during, and they looked into it and, they, and he wasn't. And he wasn't, yeah. That's He's like, suspicious. I was in jail for three years. I couldn't have been me. That's, and, uh, I believe they call that lying to police. Yes. I believe that's a crime. Yep. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe look into that. No. <laughs> Nah, it's the picnicking friends. That was their nickname. Oh my god, picnicking he friends in the cult. It, dude, it's so funny. <sighs> Pacciani and his picnicking friends. <laughs> no, <laughs> fucking hell. I learned a new term. <laughs> you guys. Oh, great. It's beautiful. So, what's your true crime? My pick. So we're sticking with the true crime. Um, I think this book's newer, right? Yeah. This one's from 2018. It is "I'll Be Gone in the Dark" by Michelle McNamara. So, or is it 2017? I don't know. I think it's 17 because she died at, in the... And did they find the Golden State Killer? No. Last year? Didn't they? Oh, I think, yeah, I think just recently they they sorted that out. Mm-hmm. We'll find out, I guess. She died in 2016. Mm. So sad. Um, but yes, this book is about, uh, it's one woman's obsessive search for the Golden State Killer, yeah. which she coined that name for him. He was the oh, yeah. East Area Rapist. Monster of Florence was coined by Spezzi. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, so I'll Be Gone in the Dark, the masterpiece McNamara was writing at the time of her sudden death, offers an atmospheric snapshot of a moment in American history and a chilling account of a criminal mastermind and the wreckage he left behind. It is also a portrait of a woman's obsession and her unflagging pursuit of the truth. Framed by an introduction from Gillian Flynn and an afterward by McNamara's husband, Patton Oswalt, the book was completed by Michelle's lead researcher and a close colleague. Utterly original and compelling, it is destined to become a true crime classic and may, at last, unmask the Golden State Killer. Yeah, I can't remember if they... Uh, they they arrested a suspect, and I can't remember I know, if he yeah. was convicted. I know there was new evidence that was found recently. Yes, about last it. year. Yeah, I, don't remember I think they happened. they took a suspect. They arrested someone, and they were pretty fucking. Now was this dead the guy? Because I listen to a lot of true crime. Mm-hmm. There was one guy who would um like he'd rape the people, and he'd put like plates on them, and if on they the men, moved, I th- then that he would like hit them been. or kill them or something. Is that the same guy? Because so at first he's just the East Area rapist, yeah, just and people. he's just he raped. He's a serial rapist. He raped like fifty people. He'd go scout their houses first. Mm-hmm. We'll talk more about that, but. Um, I can't wait to talk. That's my biggest fucking fear. Already, I read two chapters. I'm like triggered. <laughs> yeah, right. No. <laughs> It, like he was good at it He's so and that's good. so terrifying yeah. because most of the time you know rape is usually like a, a, a an afterthought it, it's an in the moment thing 
You don't yeah. plan out, I'm going to rape this woman tonight whom I've never met, but yeah, the house looks easy to get like into. Yeah, weeks playing yeah. this shit. In the chapter I read, um, a, a child of one of the victims walked into the hallway and ran into him with no pants yeah, and a mask and a on. Mask. He was like, I'm playing and he had a sword. mom and dad. I was like, oh. And he had a sword, Jesus. like, in his belt. Yep. Like, what the fuck? That's a, okay. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm gonna go back to bed yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> It's a fucking weird nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Ty, really, man? Yeah. I've this, been so in a murder this month and yeah, it's yeah. stressing me out. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm so pumped to read this and, like, go through it because she it's written really well from what i see so far yes. and she has so much evidence and like she goes so in depth yeah, she goes to and I'm, town i'm fucking she's pumped. just a mom in her fucking I know. back room yeah. like all right let's use the internet let's find this let's shit. find this shit yeah well that's the thing a lot of people are getting who are getting into true crime um, in cases. in this day and age are going to cold cases that they find interesting and they're getting mm-hmm. some great evidence like mm-hmm. if you watch um Shit, what's it called? There's an ep- uh, a Netflix show where they go through the nuns. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Who were, like, raped and murdered yeah. and, and everything. Oh, I know the poster. I don't know the name. The Keepers. Yeah. It's a really good series. And it's about two older women who are trying to go yeah. through this cold case just Bored. to find. find yeah, them. they're just, like, they went to that school and mm-hmm. they're just trying to find out what happened to that teacher that they loved. And fuck, they were yep. onto it, but the, unfortunately, like the guy, I don't want to keep spoilers, but yeah, yeah, watch it, watch it because it's really good. It yeah, is so, really you know, disappointing and depressing, though. So if you think you can investigate shit, you probably can. Just but, do you it. Know, be careful if they can do it, and and you've got some time to kill if it's like a hobby of yours. But could do it. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to really investigate them because what if they're on to me? Then I know, I know. Mm-mm. Back it up. <laughs> Back it on up. Well, if it's one that you have no possible way of being involved in, I think you're okay. Yeah, like the monster of Florence. I should no. investigate. Yeah, him. because there's absolutely it's no done. way. It's, it's probably you. dead. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So why the you fuck don't know? Not? I could be a daughter of one of these members of the satanic cult. <laughs> okay, so maybe it. choose a country that your ancestors aren't from. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not wealthy, powerful people, so they're not part of the cult. Mm. Or are they? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> find out later. Stay tuned. For Find out next episode. <laughs> They're not. Oh, I love murder. Yep. I mean, it's bad, but it's it's, fun it's bad, to but read it's fun about. to read. Yeah. Um, let us know if you have any other ideas for themes. I think after this, because I my room has been littered with serial killer notes. Beautiful. And it's frightening. Yeah. We may have to take a break. Mm. I think we should do YA. Because you hate YA and it's going to bother you. <laughs> At least <laughs> it'll funny. be an easy read. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Like Sounds breeze, good. light breeze light after breeze. a terrible month yeah, of murder. That's true. That, that, that'll that be good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nice and light. Well, I got to read about one more person getting raped and mutilated. It's, yeah, it's brutal. It does a lot. Yeah. Psychologically. How about no? <laughs> How about a no? I walk home alone a lot. It's frightening. I don't need that in my brain. That's fair. That's fair. Alrighty. Well, Alrighty. I've been Lillian. This has been a long one. Thank you for sticking yes, with us. Yes, if you're still here, eat yeah. some biscotti, biscotti, drink some wine, hey. and enjoy your night. And yeah. snuggle up with I'll Be Gone in the Dark because it's number one New York Times bestseller. Ooh, you go, girl. Go, Michelle. All right. I have been Lillian. I have been Chelsea. And uh, this was the book coven. Yep. See you next Don't time. Don't get murdered. Solve some Don't crimes. Get- be solve good. some crimes solve some be crime. good citizens be that person be like you know what be that guy. i googled and i learned and i learned <laughs> i solved it yeah you show those cops yeah google could and do. then let us know which crime you solved yeah yeah <laughs> toodles <Bye. laughs>